Once upon a time, in the tranquil kingdom of Lyria, there was a moonlit forest known for its shimmering beauty and magical creatures. At the heart of this forest was a grand castle where the royal family lived, known for their wisdom and kindness. However, the kingdom faced a problem that no one could solve. The moonlit crown, the symbol of the kingdom's peace and prosperity, had lost its light. The crown, once radiant with moonlight, had dimmed, causing unrest among the kingdom's people. Legends spoke of a hidden power within the crown that could only be restored by a brave soul who embarked on a journey to the Celestial Falls, a mysterious and magical place beyond the enchanted mountains. The task of finding this brave soul fell upon Princess Elowen, the youngest daughter of the royal family. Elowen was known for her compassion and adventurous spirit. Determined to restore her kingdom's peace, she decided to undertake the quest herself. Equipped with a map from the royal archives and a pendant that had been in her family for generations, Elowen set off on her journey. The map led her through dense forests and over misty hills, guiding her towards the celestial falls. Her journey was not easy, as she ventured deeper into the enchanted mountains. She encountered three mystical guardians who each posed a challenge. The first guardian was a wise old fox who guarded a bridge over a sparkling river. The fox spoke in riddles. I am not alive, but I grow. I don't have lungs, but I need air. I don't have a mouth, but water kills me. What am I? Elowen thought carefully and answered. Fire. The fox nodded and allowed her to cross the bridge. On the other side, Elowen found herself in a dense, magical forest where the second guardian awaited a majestic stag with antlers adorned with glowing runes. The stag spoke in a deep, melodic voice. To find the truth, you must first see the unseen. Look for the hidden light in the darkness. Elow and used her pendant, which began to glow faintly in the darkness. Following its light, she discovered a hidden path illuminated by tiny fireflies. She walked this path, which led her to the base of the celestial falls. The final guardian was a gentle, ancient spirit who appeared as a swirling mist. The spirit's voice echoed softly, the moonlit crown's light is hidden in the heart of the falls. But to retrieve it, you must prove your worth by showing true courage. Elowen approached the roaring falls, feeling the cool mist on her face. The sound was overwhelming, but she pressed on, guided by the pendant's glow. At the center of the falls, she found a hidden cave. Inside the cave, Elowen discovered a pool of crystal clear water with a shimmering, silver orb floating above it. As she reached for the orb, she was met with a powerful gust of wind. She closed her eyes, focused on her mission, and whispered a heartfelt promise to her kingdom to bring back peace and light. The orb glowed brightly, and Elowen felt a surge of warmth and energy. She carefully took the orb, which transformed into a brilliant moonstone. With the moonstone in hand, she returned to the castle. When Elowen placed the moonstone on the moonlit crown, it began to glow with a dazzling, ethereal light. The crown's brilliance was restored, casting a serene glow over the entire kingdom. The people of Lyria celebrated with joy and gratitude, praising Princess Elowen for her bravery and determination. The moonlit crown shone brightly once more, and with it, peace and prosperity returned to the kingdom. Elowen's courage and selflessness had saved her people, and she became a beloved figure in the kingdom's history. From that day on, the Celestial Falls became a symbol of hope and bravery, and the moonlit forest continued to be a place of wonder and magic. The tale of Princess Elowen and the Moonlit Crown was passed down through generations, reminding everyone that true courage lies in facing challenges with a brave heart and a selfless spirit. And so, under the radiant glow of the Moonlit Crown, the Kingdom of Lyria thrived, forever blessed by the light of a courageous princess and the magic of a moonlit adventure. In the moonlit brilliance of the crown, the kingdom of Lyria discovered that the most profound magic of all is the light that shines from within and the courage to bring light to others in times of darkness. Once upon a time, in a quaint village nestled by a sparkling river, there was an ancient willow tree known as the Whispering Willow. 
The villagers believed the tree held ancient wisdom and that its rustling leaves carried messages from the past and future. The willow was revered, and its shade was a place where people came to seek guidance and solace. In this village lived a young girl named Mira, known for her curiosity and kind heart. Mira loved the whispering willow and often visited it to listen to the soft, melodic whispers of its leaves. One summer, as the village prepared for the Festival of Lights, Mira noticed something troubling. The whispering willow seemed sad, its leaves drooping and its whispers faint. Determined to help, Mira asked the village elder, an old woman named Grandmother Elda, about the tree's condition. Elda, with a heavy heart, revealed a long-forgotten tale, the willow's magic was tied to a precious gem known as the heart of the forest. This gem had been stolen long ago, and the whispering willow had lost its strength. Elda told Mira that to restore the willow's magic, she must embark on a quest to find the heart of the forest, hidden deep within the misty mountains. Mira, undeterred by the challenge, agreed to set off on the journey. With a small satchel of provisions and a pendant given to her by Elda, Mira began her adventure. She traveled through dense forests and over rolling hills, guided by the pendant that glowed softly when she was on the right path. Her journey first led her to the Whispering Brook, a sparkling stream that twisted through the valley. Here, she encountered her first challenge, a riddle spoken by the brook's gentle current, I have keys but open no locks, I have space but no rooms, you can enter but not go outside. What am I? Mira pondered the riddle, recalling her experiences. A piano, she answered, as the brook's water swirled and revealed a hidden path. Following the path, Mira arrived at the base of the misty mountains. As she climbed, the fog grew thicker, and the air colder. She reached a narrow cave where she found her second challenge, a great stone door with another riddle inscribed upon it, I have mountains, but no land, I have seas, but no water, I have cities, but no people. What am I? Mira thought carefully and then answered, a map. The stone door creaked open, allowing her to enter the cave. Inside the cave, Mira faced her final challenge. At the center of the cavern was a large, shimmering pool, its waters reflecting countless stars. On the opposite side of the pool, resting on a pedestal, was the heart of the forest, a radiant gem pulsating with a soft, green light. To reach the gem, Mira needed to cross the pool. As she stepped towards it, the waters began to swirl and the reflections turned into swirling patterns. She realized that the reflections were trying to distract her. Keeping her focus on the gem, she remembered the pendant's glow and used it to guide her steps across the shimmering surface. When she finally reached the pedestal, Mira gently took the heart of the forest and felt its warmth. She carefully retraced her steps, navigating the swirling waters and the thick fog of the mountains. With each step, the gem's light grew brighter, guiding her back to the village. Upon returning, Mira placed the heart of the forest back at the base of the whispering willow. The tree's leaves rustled with newfound vigor, and a vibrant green glow enveloped the area. The whispering willow's whispers grew strong and clear, filling the village with a soothing melody. The villagers gathered around the willow, overjoyed by its restored beauty and magic. The Festival of Lights became a grand celebration, honoring Myra's bravery and the return of the Whispering Willow's magic. Grandmother Elda praised Mira, saying, You have shown great courage and kindness. The true magic of the heart of the forest is the strength and hope within you. Mira smiled, knowing that the magic of the Whispering Willow was not just in the gem but in the heart of the village and its people. The festival continued with laughter, music, and light, celebrating the bond between the villagers and their beloved Whispering Willow. And so, under the twinkling stars and the gentle glow of the willow's leaves, the village thrived, forever blessed by the courage of a young girl and the timeless magic of an enchanted tree. In the rustling leaves of the Whispering Willow, the village of Elmsbrook discovered that true magic lies in the heart's courage, kindness, and the power to bring light and joy to those around us. In a kingdom nestled between rolling hills and lush forests, there was a village known as Bramblewood. The village was famous for its vibrant gardens and the magical plants that flourished under the care of its people. However, a long drought had caused the gardens to wither, and the once green fields had turned to dust. 
In the center of Bramblewood stood a grand castle, where the benevolent Queen Alowen resided. Queen Alowen had always been devoted to her people, and she was deeply troubled by the suffering caused by the drought. She decided to seek the aid of an old legend, the Crystal Garden, a mythical place said to have the power to restore life and magic to the land. The Crystal Garden was rumored to be hidden deep within the enchanted forest, a place filled with magical creatures and ancient secrets. To find it, one needed a special key known as the Heart of the Forest, which had been lost for generations. The Queen called upon a brave young herbalist named Finn to undertake the quest to find the Crystal Garden. Finn was known throughout the village for his knowledge of plants and his kind heart. He eagerly accepted the challenge, determined to help his home. The journey begins Finn set out on his journey with his loyal companion, a clever fox named Ember. They ventured into the enchanted forest, a place known for its ever-changing paths and magical illusions. The forest was alive with glowing flowers and mysterious sounds, making it both beautiful and treacherous. Their first challenge was to cross the River of Echoes, which was known to confuse travelers with its repeating sounds. As Finn and Ember approached the river, they heard echoes of their own voices, making it difficult to discern the right path. Finn remembered an old story about the river and realized that the solution was to listen carefully and follow the rhythm of the natural sounds. By doing so, they were able to find the correct crossing point. The enchanted glade on the other side of the river, they arrived at the enchanted glade, a place where the trees were said to hold ancient wisdom. In the center of the glade was a majestic oak tree with a hollow trunk that was rumored to contain clues to the crystal garden. Finn and Ember approached the oak tree, and its bark began to glow with a soft light. The tree spoke in a gentle voice, giving them the next clue, asterisk, seek the stars that shine so bright, where day and night are intertwined. There you'll find the hidden gate, with patience, you shall soon be aligned. Asterisk the Starfall Meadow following the clue, Finn and Ember traveled to the Starfall Meadow, a mystical place where day and night seemed to blend together. The meadow was filled with flowers that bloomed only under the starlight. They searched the meadow and found a hidden stone archway covered in twinkling lights. The archway was the entrance to the Crystal Garden, but it was locked and required the heart of the forest to open. Finn and Ember knew they needed to find this elusive key. They noticed that the lights on the archway seemed to be responding to a pattern. By arranging the flowers in the meadow to match the pattern, they activated the archway, revealing a hidden passage. The Crystal Garden Finn and Ember entered the passage and emerged into the Crystal Garden, a breathtaking sight. The garden was a dazzling array of crystals and luminous plants, each glowing with vibrant colors. At the center of the garden was a grand crystal fountain that pulsed with life-giving energy. Beside the fountain, Finn found the heart of the forest, a radiant gem that seemed to contain the essence of the garden's magic. With great care, he took the heart and prepared to return to Bramblewood. Restoring the village Finn and Ember made their way back to Bramblewood, where they were greeted with joy and anticipation. The queen took the heart of the forest and placed it in the center of the village's main square. The moment the heart was set in place, the magic of the crystal garden began to spread, restoring the lushness of the gardens and the vitality of the land. The once dry fields began to bloom with vibrant colors, and the gardens flourished with new life. The villagers rejoiced, their spirits lifted by the return of their beloved greenery. Queen Alowen honored Finn and Ember for their bravery and resourcefulness. She declared them heroes of Bramblewood and celebrated their success with a grand feast. The Crystal Garden's magic continued to protect the village, ensuring that it remained a place of beauty and prosperity. Finn's adventure became a cherished tale in Bramblewood, a story of courage, wisdom, and the enduring power of nature's magic. The village thrived, and the legend of the Crystal Garden lived on, inspiring future generations to cherish and protect the natural world around them. The End In a small, Serene village surrounded by lush meadows and gentle streams, there stood an ancient willow tree known as the Whispering Willow. The villagers believed the tree had magical powers, as its leaves rustled with secrets and its branches seemed to sway in rhythm with the wind, whispering words of wisdom. Among the villagers was a young boy named Finn, who loved exploring the woods and listening to the stories the willow would tell. One day, while playing near the tree, Finn heard a soft, sorrowful whisper. 
The voice, gentle and sad, seemed to call out to him, help me, young one. Intrigued and concerned, Finn asked the willow, what troubles you, dear tree? The whispering willow replied, many years ago, a magical gem was hidden in my roots to protect it from a great danger. But now, the gem is lost, and without it, my magic is fading. I need your help to find it and restore my power. Finn, determined to help, agreed to find the lost gem. The willow gave him a clue, follow the path of the moonlight and listen to the song of the nightingale. The gem lies where moon and song meet. That evening, as the full moon rose, Finn set out with his lantern. He followed the moonlight that danced through the forest, guiding him deeper into the woods. After a while, he heard the sweet, melodious song of a nightingale. Following the song, he arrived at a clearing bathed in moonlight. In the center of the clearing was a small, sparkling pond. The moon's reflection on the water seemed to shimmer with a magical light. Finn approached the pond and noticed a gentle glow coming from beneath the water. He carefully reached in and discovered a small, intricately carved box. Inside the box was the magical gem, glowing softly. As soon as Finn touched the gem, the clearing was filled with a warm, radiant light. The whispering willow's branches began to sway vigorously, and the rustling leaves filled the air with a joyful melody. Finn returned to the willow with the gem, and as he placed it at the base of the tree, the tree's leaves turned a brilliant green, and its branches shimmered with renewed magic. The whispering willow spoke with a voice full of gratitude, you have restored my magic and saved the village from the impending darkness. As a token of my appreciation, I grant you one wish. Finn thought for a moment and then said, I wish for the village to always be filled with happiness and prosperity. The whispering willow's branches glowed brightly, and a soft breeze carried the magic throughout the village. From that day on, the village thrived with lush crops, clear waters, and joyous celebrations. The whispering willow remained a symbol of hope and wisdom, and Finn was remembered as the brave boy who restored the magic and brought prosperity to his home. Every year, during the full moon, the villagers would gather around the Whispering Willow, celebrating the magic that Finn had restored and sharing stories of their own dreams and wishes. The Whispering Willow continued to whisper secrets and guidance, ensuring that the village remained a place of wonder and joy for generations to come. And so, Finn's wish came true, and the legend of the Whispering Willow lived on, a reminder of the magic that can be found in helping others and believing in the extraordinary. The End once upon a time, in a village surrounded by a dense forest, there stood a grand, ancient willow tree known as the Whispering Willow. The tree was famed for its enchanting ability to communicate with those who were kind and pure of heart. It was said that the willow could grant a single wish to those who truly needed it. In this village lived a young girl named Nora. Nora was kind-hearted and always helped others, whether it was caring for her younger siblings or tending to the village garden. Despite her generosity, Nora's family faced a difficult winter. Their food supplies were dwindling, and the cold seemed endless. One evening, as the first snowflakes began to fall, Nora decided to seek out the Whispering Willow. She hoped that if she could make a wish, it might help her family and the village through the harsh winter. Guided by the shimmering light of the moon, Nora made her way through the snow-covered forest. The trees sparkled with frost, and the forest seemed alive with the soft whisper of the wind. After a long walk, she reached the whispering willow, its branches heavy with snow, and its leaves glistening in the moonlight. Hello, whispering willow, Nora said softly, her breath forming little clouds in the cold air. I've come to ask for your help. The willow's branches rustled gently, and a soothing voice echoed from within its ancient bark. To receive my aid, you must show the purity of your heart. Complete three tasks that demonstrate your kindness and courage. Nora nodded, ready to take on the challenge. The willow explained the three tasks. Task 1, the lost lamb. The first task took Nora to the edge of the village, where she found a young lamb separated from its flock and shivering in the cold. Without hesitation, Nora wrapped the lamb in her warm shawl and gently carried it back to the safety of the village. The grateful shepherds and villagers helped her reunite the lamb with its family. 
task 2, the broken well the second task led Nora to the village well, which had frozen over and was no longer providing water. The villagers were struggling, and their supplies were running low. Nora worked tirelessly to break the ice and repair the well. She used her warmth and strength to ensure the well was functioning again, providing much needed water for everyone. Task 3, the starry night for the final task, Nora was guided to a quiet hill overlooking the village. There, she saw the twinkling stars and heard the soft whispers of the night. To complete the task, she needed to light a lantern and release it into the night sky as a symbol of hope and gratitude. Nora carefully lit the lantern and released it, watching as it floated up and joined the constellation of stars above. With the three tasks complete, Nora returned to the whispering willow. The tree's branches swayed with a gentle breeze, and the voice spoke once more. You have proven your heart's purity through your actions. Your wish will be granted. Nora closed her eyes and made her wish. I wish for warmth and food for my family and the village so that we can make it through this winter. As she spoke, the whispering willow's branches glowed with a soft, golden light. The next morning, the village awoke to a miraculous sight. The cold had lifted, and a gentle, warm breeze filled the air. Snow had turned into gentle rain, and the land was covered with lush, green plants and fresh, new food. The villagers found their supplies replenished, and the winter's harshness had softened into a mild, pleasant season. Nora's family and the entire village were overjoyed and grateful. They celebrated their good fortune and shared the bounty with everyone, ensuring that no one went without. Nora's story became a beloved tale in the village, a reminder of the power of kindness and the magic of the whispering willow. The tree continued to stand tall, its branches rustling softly, a symbol of hope and generosity for generations to come. And so, the village thrived under the gentle care of the whispering willow, and Nora's heart remained as warm and kind as ever. The End Once upon a time, in a land where the sky was always adorned with twinkling stars, there was a charming village called Luminera. Luminera was known for its lush meadows, sparkling rivers, and the gentle glow of moonlight that bathed the land each night. The villagers lived in harmony, guided by the wisdom of the moon and the stars. In this village lived a young girl named Alina. Alina was kind-hearted and had a special connection with the natural world. She often wandered through the meadows, speaking with the animals and listening to the whispers of the wind. One evening, as the full moon cast a silvery light over the meadow, Alina noticed a peculiar sight. In the heart of the meadow stood a tall, ancient oak tree, its leaves shimmering with an otherworldly glow. At the base of the tree was a small, golden door, which Alina had never seen before. Curious and intrigued, Alina approached the door and gently pushed it open. To her amazement, the door led to a hidden underground chamber filled with glowing orbs and celestial maps. In the center of the chamber was a beautiful, shimmering moonstone on a pedestal. As Alina reached for the moonstone, a soft, melodious voice filled the chamber. Welcome, Alina. I am Luna, the guardian of the moonlit meadow. You have found the moonstone, but to take it, you must first prove your heart's worth. Alina looked around in wonder. What must I do to prove my heart's worth? Luna's voice was gentle and guiding. You must complete three tasks. Each task will test your bravery, kindness, and wisdom. Alina agreed to the challenge and set out to complete the tasks. Task 1, the Bridge of Bravery The first task led Alina to a rickety bridge spanning a deep chasm. The bridge swayed dangerously in the moonlight, and the sight of the abyss below made Alina's heart race. She took a deep breath and stepped onto the bridge. As she carefully made her way across, she focused on her goal and the safety of her village. With each step, her courage grew stronger. She reached the other side safely and felt a sense of triumph. Task 2, the Garden of Kindness for the second task, Alina arrived at a once beautiful garden now overrun with weeds and wilting plants. The garden's caretaker, a gentle gnome named Thistle, was struggling to restore it. Alina approached Thistle and offered her help. Together, they worked tirelessly to clear the weeds, water the plants, and nurture the garden back to life. Alina's kindness and dedication made the garden bloom once more, 
and Thistle expressed his heartfelt gratitude. Task 3, The Puzzle of Wisdom The final task took Alina to a grand, ancient library filled with dusty books and scrolls. In the center of the library was a large puzzle with intricate symbols and patterns. Alina studied the puzzle carefully and realized that it represented the story of the moon's journey through the night sky. By aligning the symbols according to the moon's path, she solved the puzzle. The library lit up with a warm, golden light, and Luna appeared before her once more. You have completed the tasks with bravery, kindness, and wisdom, Luna said. You are truly worthy of the moonstone. Luna handed Alina the moonstone, which glowed with a soft, celestial light. Alina thanked Luna and made her way back to the surface. As Alina emerged into the moonlit meadow, she saw that the moonstone's light had a magical effect. The meadow sparkled with an ethereal glow, and the village below was bathed in a gentle, comforting light. Alina returned the moonstone to its place in the hidden chamber, knowing that its magic would continue to protect and guide the land. The village of Luminara flourished under the moonstone's light, and Alina's bravery and kindness became legendary. The story of Alina in the moonlit meadow was told for generations, reminding the villagers of the magic that exists in the heart of those who act with courage, kindness, and wisdom. And so, the village of Luminara thrived under the watchful gaze of the moon, with Alina's tail shining brightly as a beacon of hope and harmony. The End In a small village nestled at the edge of an ancient forest, there was a tale told to children every night. The tale was about the moonlit forest, a magical place that only appeared under the full moon. The villagers believed that the forest held a hidden treasure, a crystal known as the moonstone, which could grant a single wish to anyone who found it. Young Eleanor, a curious and brave girl, had always been fascinated by this tale. One clear, full moon night, as the villagers gathered around the fire, Eleanor decided it was time to discover the truth for herself. She packed a small bag with essentials, kissed her mother goodbye, and ventured into the moonlit forest. Entering the moonlit forest as Eleanor stepped into the forest, the moonlight seemed to weave through the trees, creating a silver pathway on the ground. The forest was alive with gentle whispers and soft, glowing lights. Eleanor followed the moonlit path, her heart racing with excitement and wonder. Soon, she encountered a talking owl perched on a low branch. The owl had eyes like gleaming amber and a wise demeanor. Welcome to the moonlit forest, he hooted. I am Ollivander, the guardian of the forest secrets. To find the moonstone, you must first prove your worth through three trials. The first trial, the riddle of the stars Ollivander presented Eleanor with a riddle. I am not alive, but I grow, I don't have lungs, but I need air, I don't have a mouth, but water kills me. What am I? Eleanor thought carefully. The answer was, fire. Ollivander nodded approvingly and allowed her to proceed to the next trial. Well done. Your journey has only just begun. The second trial, the river of reflections Eleanor came to a shimmering river with waters as clear as crystal. The river was known for reflecting one's deepest fears and desires. As she prepared to cross, the reflection showed her a vision of her village in peril. She saw smoke rising and heard the cries of her family. Fearful but determined, Eleanor focused on her mission and crossed the river, ignoring the haunting visions. On the other side, a gentle sprite appeared. You have shown great courage and strength. The final trial awaits. The third trial, the bridge of trust Eleanor reached a rickety wooden bridge that spanned a deep chasm. The bridge was swaying, and it seemed dangerous to cross. A voice from the shadows spoke, to cross this bridge, you must trust in your heart and take the first step without knowing what lies ahead. Eleanor took a deep breath and stepped onto the bridge. As she moved, the bridge steadied under her feet, glowing softly with each step. She realized that her trust and bravery were guiding her safely across. Finding the moonstone at the end of the bridge, Eleanor entered a moonlit glade where the moonstone was said to be hidden. The glade was bathed in a soft, ethereal light, and at its center stood a pedestal with a glowing crystal. The moonstone was even more beautiful than she had imagined, radiating a soft, calming light. Eleanor approached the moonstone and carefully lifted it from the pedestal. A voice echoed through the glade, 
You have completed the trials and proven your worth. What is your wish? Eleanor thought about her village and the people she loved. Her heart ached with the desire to help them. I wish for the safety and happiness of my village and for the forest to always remain magical. As she spoke, the moonstone's light grew brighter, and a gentle breeze carried her wish throughout the forest. The moonstone returned to its pedestal, and the glade was filled with a warm, golden light. Returning home with her wish granted, Eleanor made her way back to her village. As she emerged from the forest, she saw that everything was as it should be, her village was safe, and the people were celebrating under the moonlight. Her family greeted her with relief and joy. Eleanor shared her adventure with the villagers, and they marveled at the magic of the moonlit forest. From that night on, the villagers celebrated the full moon with a festival, honoring the moonstone and the bravery of those who sought its magic. Eleanor became known as a hero in her village, not just for finding the moonstone but for her selflessness and courage. The moonlit forest continued to appear under the full moon, a symbol of magic and wonder, and Eleanor's story was told for generations, inspiring others to be brave and kind-hearted. The End Once upon a time, in a faraway land where the night sky was dotted with countless stars, there was a tiny star named Stella. Stella was smaller than the other stars and often felt overshadowed by their brilliance. She dreamed of shining brightly and making a difference in the world. One evening, as Stella gazed down at the earth, she saw a small village struggling in darkness. The village had lost its way because the moon had hidden behind a thick layer of clouds, and the villagers could no longer see to find their way home. Stella's heart ached for the villagers, and she decided she wanted to help them. Despite her small size, she was determined to make a difference. As she twinkled bravely, she called out to the moon for guidance. Dear moon, Stella said, I see that the village needs light. I want to help them find their way. How can I do this? The moon, with its gentle glow, replied, Even the smallest star can make a big difference if they shine with all their heart. Show your bravery, and you will find a way. Encouraged by the moon's words, Stella gathered all her courage. She began to shine with all her might, though it seemed small compared to the other stars. Slowly but surely, her light began to grow brighter and brighter. Stella's light started to pierce through the thick clouds, making the sky shimmer with a soft, golden glow. She focused all her energy on creating a path of light for the villagers below. Her light illuminated the path to the village and helped guide them safely. The villagers looked up in awe at the gentle, glowing star that had appeared in the sky. They followed the light, which led them to a safe place where they could gather and find their way home. As they reached their village, they marveled at the star that had guided them through the darkness. The village chief, an elderly woman with a warm smile, gazed up at Stella and spoke to her with gratitude. Thank you, little star. Your light has brought us hope and safety. We will always remember your bravery. Stella felt a warm glow of happiness as she heard the villagers' thanks. Her light, though small, had made a big difference. The clouds began to part, and the moon reappeared, shining brightly alongside Stella. With the moon's light returning to the sky, Stella's own light became softer, but she still glowed with pride. The moon spoke once more, you have shown that courage and kindness are not measured by size but by the heart. Your bravery has made a difference, and you should be proud. Stella returned to her place in the night sky, no longer feeling overshadowed. She shone with a quiet confidence, knowing that even the smallest star could make a big impact and guided by a kind heart. From that day on, whenever the village faced a dark night, they would look up at the sky and remember the brave little star that had guided them. Stella's story became a cherished tale, teaching everyone that even the smallest light can shine brightly in the darkness. And so, Stella continued to twinkle in the night sky, a symbol of hope and bravery for all who looked up and believed in the power of a small star. The End Once upon a time, in a charming village nestled between rolling hills and a sparkling river, there was a magical tree known as the Whispering Willow. This ancient willow had silver leaves that shimmered in the moonlight, and it was said to possess the power to grant one heartfelt wish to anyone who truly believed in its magic. 
in the village lived a kind-hearted girl named Mia. Mia loved the Whispering Willow deeply and often visited it to talk about her dreams and hopes. Her greatest wish was to bring happiness to her family and friends, who had been facing hard times lately. Her father, a skilled carpenter, had fallen ill, and her mother worked tirelessly to make ends meet. One crisp autumn evening, as the golden leaves fell around her, Mia sat by the Whispering Willow and whispered her wish into the gentle breeze. She asked for a miracle that would restore joy and prosperity to her family and the village. The next morning, Mia awoke to find a small, intricately carved wooden box on her doorstep. The box was adorned with delicate patterns and a shimmering silver key. There was no note, but Mia sensed that it was connected to her wish. The secret of the box Mia took the box to the Whispering Willow, hoping it would offer some guidance. As she approached, the tree's leaves rustled softly, and she could hear faint whispers in the breeze. The silver key seemed to glow with a soft, inviting light. Mia unlocked the box, revealing a beautifully crafted locket inside. The locket had a tiny portrait of the Whispering Willow etched into it and a small compartment that held a single golden seed. The locket seemed to hum with a gentle, magical energy. The Whispering Willow's whispers grew clearer, and Mia understood that the locket was a key to unlocking a hidden treasure that would help her village. The golden seed was the heart of this treasure, which needed to be planted in a special place. The journey to the hidden garden the tree's whispers guided Mia to a remote part of the forest, where a hidden garden was said to be located. It was a place of legends, rumored to be enchanted and filled with mystical creatures. Mia set out with the locket, the golden seed, and her loyal dog, Jasper, by her side. They journeyed through the forest, facing various challenges along the way. They crossed a crystal clear stream with the help of a kind-hearted water sprite, solved riddles posed by a wise old fox, and navigated through a maze of enchanted vines that seemed to change paths. After a long and arduous journey, they finally reached the hidden garden. The garden was a breathtaking sight, filled with vibrant flowers, glowing trees, and a sparkling fountain at its center. Mia found a secluded spot near the fountain, where she planted the golden seed. As soon as the seed was planted, the garden began to shimmer with a brilliant light. Flowers bloomed instantly, and the fountain's water sparkled like diamonds. The magic of the garden was undeniable, and Mia could feel a powerful, positive energy radiating from it. The miracle of the hidden garden with the garden's magic in full bloom, Mia and Jasper returned to the village. To their amazement, the once struggling village had transformed. The crops in the fields were flourishing, the river's water was crystal clear, and the village's spirits had lifted. Mia's father recovered from his illness, and her mother's hard work became a joyful endeavor rather than a struggle. The villagers gathered to celebrate, and Mia's wish had indeed come true. The magic of the hidden garden had brought prosperity and happiness back to their lives. The whispering willow's whispers grew softer, and Mia felt a deep sense of gratitude. She knew that the real magic lay in the love and care that the villagers had for one another, and the hidden garden was a reminder of the power of hope and kindness. A lasting legacy in the years that followed, the village of Mia flourished, and the story of the whispering willow and the hidden garden was passed down through generations. The garden remained a secret haven for those who needed inspiration and renewal, and the village thrived under its magic. Mia grew up to become a beloved storyteller, sharing the tale of the whispering willow and the hidden garden with children and visitors. Her story was a beacon of hope, teaching the value of believing in magic, kindness, and the importance of never giving up on one's dreams. And so, the village of Lumina continued to shine brightly, its people forever touched by the magic of the whispering willow and the hidden treasure that restored their joy and prosperity. The End In a peaceful valley surrounded by majestic mountains, there lay a quaint village called Lumina. Lumina was known for its extraordinary beauty and its people who were gifted musicians. At the heart of the village lived a young girl named Alara, who was renowned for her enchanting singing voice. Each night, as the moon rose high in the sky, Alara's songs would drift through the village, bringing joy and serenity to all who heard them. One evening, as Alara sang under the moonlight, a strange thing happened. The moon began to flicker and dim, casting an eerie shadow over Lumina. The 
villagers gathered in the square, worried and confused. Without the moon's light, their music seemed to lose its magic, and a sense of sadness fell over the once cheerful village. The village elder, a wise woman named Celeste, approached Alara with a grave expression. Alara, it seems that the moonlight melody, a mystical force that has always kept our village in harmony, has been disrupted. The only way to restore it is to find the moonlit crystal, which has been lost for centuries. Elara, with her heart full of determination, agreed to find the moonlit crystal. She knew that it was said to be hidden in the enchanted forest, a place known for its magical and mysterious qualities. Armed with her courage and a small silver flute that had been passed down through generations, she set off on her quest, accompanied by her loyal companion, a wise old owl named Orion. The enchanted forest the enchanted forest was a place of wonder, where trees seemed to whisper secrets and flowers glowed with a soft light. As Alara and Orion ventured deeper into the forest, they encountered a mischievous sprite named Willow, who offered to guide them, but only if they could solve a riddle. Willow fluttered around them and chimed, I speak without a mouth and hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with the wind. What am I? Alara thought for a moment and replied, an echo. Pleased with the answer, Willow agreed to lead them to the next part of their journey. They traveled through the forest, passing sparkling streams and towering trees, until they reached a grove where the moonlit crystal was said to be hidden. The moonlit grove in the center of the grove stood a magnificent tree with branches that seemed to touch the sky. At its base was a large, ancient stone with intricate carvings. According to legend, the moonlit crystal was hidden within the stone, but it could only be revealed by a pure heart and a harmonious melody. Hilera took out her silver flute and began to play a soft, melodic tune. The notes floated through the grove, intertwining with the natural sounds of the forest. As she played, the carvings on the stone began to glow, and the stone itself started to shift and move. The moonlit crystal, a radiant gem that shimmered with the light of the moon, emerged from within the stone. Ilara gently picked it up, feeling its warmth and magic. The return to Lumina with the moonlit crystal in hand, Ilara and Orion made their way back to Lumina. As they approached the village, they noticed that the moonlight was still dim and the villagers were still forlorn. Ilara placed the moonlit crystal in the center of the village square and began to play a melody on her flute, with the crystal's light amplifying the magic of her music. The crystal's glow grew brighter and brighter, and soon, the moon began to shine again, casting a beautiful, silvery light over the village. The villagers, seeing the moon's light return, gathered around Alara, their spirits lifted by the enchanting melody. As Alara sang, her voice blending with the magical light of the moonlit crystal, the village was filled with a sense of peace and joy. The music resonated with the hearts of the people, and the moonlight melody was restored to its full splendor. Queen Celeste approached Alara and thanked her for her bravery and her gift of music. She declared that Alara's song would be celebrated every year on the night of the full moon, to remind everyone of the harmony between the moon and the music that bound their village together. A lasting legacy Alara continued to sing and play her flute, her melodies bringing joy and light to Lumina. The moonlit crystal was placed in a special alcove in the village square, where its light would always remind the villagers of the importance of harmony, both in music and in life. And so, under the moon's gentle glow and the magical music of Alara, the village of Lumina thrived once more. The moonlight shone brightly, and the melodies of the villagers filled the valley with happiness and peace. Alara's tale became a cherished story passed down through generations, a testament to the power of music, bravery, and the enduring magic of the moon. The End in a quaint little village nestled between rolling hills and a sparkling river, there lived a kind-hearted girl named Alara. She had golden hair that gleamed like the sun and eyes as blue as the summer sky. Alara was loved by everyone in the village for her gentle spirit and helpful nature. But there was one thing that set her apart from the rest, she had an extraordinary ability to understand the language of birds. Ilara's home was a cozy cottage at the edge of the village, surrounded by a lush garden filled with flowers of every color. Each morning, she would tend to the flowers and listen to the birds sing their songs. They would tell her stories of far-off lands, hidden treasures, and ancient secrets. 
Ilara cherished these tales and often wondered if she would ever have an adventure of her own. One day, as Ilara was tending to her garden, she noticed a strange bird perched on the fence. It was unlike any bird she had ever seen. Its feathers were of brilliant silver, shimmering in the sunlight, and its eyes sparkled with an otherworldly light. The bird looked at Alara with a sense of urgency and began to speak in a language only she could understand. Fair Alara, the bird said, I have flown across many lands to find you. My name is Argent, and I come from the enchanted forest of Lumina, where magic flows through every leaf and branch. Our forest is in great danger, and only you can save it. Ilara's heart quickened at the thought of an adventure, but she was also filled with concern. What kind of danger? she asked. The source of our magic is the silver feather, Argent explained. It is a powerful artifact that has kept our forest alive for centuries. But recently, it was stolen by a wicked sorcerer who seeks to drain its power for his own dark purposes. Without the silver feather, Lumina will wither away, and all the creatures who live there will perish. Ilara knew she couldn't ignore such a plea for help. She had always dreamed of going on a grand adventure, and now, it seemed, her time had come. I will help you, Argent, she said firmly. Tell me what I must do. The silver bird nodded gratefully. We must travel to the heart of the enchanted forest, where the sorcerer has hidden the silver feather in a place guarded by powerful spells. The journey will be perilous, but with your courage and my guidance, we can succeed. Without hesitation, Alara packed a small bag with food, water, and a warm cloak. She left a note for her parents, explaining that she was going on an important journey, and set off with Argent leading the way. As they traveled, Argent told Alara more about the enchanted forest of Lumina. It was a place of breathtaking beauty, where trees towered high into the sky, their leaves glowing with a soft, magical light. The river sparkled like diamonds, and the flowers bloomed in colors that no human eyes had ever seen. But now, without the silver feather's magic, the forest was beginning to fade. The trees were losing their luster, the rivers were drying up, and the flowers were wilting. Ilara and Argent traveled for days, crossing rivers and mountains, until they finally reached the edge of the enchanted forest. Even in its weakened state, Lumino was still a sight to behold. Ilara gasped in awe as she stepped into the forest, feeling the remnants of its magic all around her. We must hurry, Argent urged. The sorcerer's lair lies deep within the forest, hidden in the Valley of Shadows. It is a place of great darkness, where the light of the silver feather is being drained away. But be warned, Ilara, many have tried to enter the Valley of Shadows and have never returned. Ilara felt a shiver run down her spine, but she was determined to save the forest. She followed Arjun through the winding paths of Lumina, her heart heavy with the weight of her task. As they ventured deeper into the forest, they encountered many challenges. The once glowing trees now cast long, eerie shadows, and the air was thick with an unnatural fog. Strange creatures lurked in the underbrush, their eyes glowing in the darkness. But Alara pressed on, her determination unwavering. At last, they reached the entrance to the Valley of Shadows. It was a narrow gorge, flanked by towering cliffs that seemed to stretch endlessly into the sky. The entrance was guarded by a pair of stone statues, two fearsome creatures with wings and sharp claws. Their eyes glowed with a sinister light, and they seemed to watch Alara and Argent as they approached. These are the guardians of the valley, Argent whispered. They will not let us pass unless we prove ourselves worthy. Ilara took a deep breath and stepped forward. The stone guardians stared down at her, their eyes unblinking. Who dares to enter the Valley of Shadows? One of them boomed. I am Ilara, from the village beyond the hills, she replied, her voice steady. I seek the silver feather to restore the magic of Lumina. The guardians exchanged a glance, and then the second one spoke. To prove your worth, you must answer this riddle. What is it that belongs to you? but others use it more than you do. Ilara thought for a moment, her mind racing. She had always been good at solving riddles, but this one was tricky. Then, suddenly, it came to her. My name, she answered confidently. It belongs to me, but others use it more. The guardian's eyes glowed brighter, 
and they stepped aside, allowing Alara and Argent to pass. You have answered correctly, they said in unison. May you find what you seek. With a sigh of relief, Alara entered the Valley of Shadows. The air was colder here, and the darkness seemed to close in around them. But in the distance, she could see a faint glow, the light of the silver feather. Alara and Argent hurried toward the light, but as they got closer, they saw that the silver feather was trapped inside a crystal orb, suspended in mid-air by chains of dark magic. And standing beside the orb was the sorcerer, a tall, cloaked figure with eyes that burned like embers. So, the little fox and his friend have come to retrieve the feather, the sorcerer sneered. How quaint. Ilara stepped forward, her voice filled with resolve. I will not let you destroy this forest, sorcerer. Return the silver feather and leave Lumina in peace. The sorcerer laughed, a cold, cruel sound that echoed through the valley. You are brave, child, but you are no match for my power. The silver feather is mine, and with it, I will rule over all the magic in this world. Ilara knew that she couldn't defeat the sorcerer with strength alone. She had to outsmart him. She glanced at Argent, who nodded, understanding her plan. Very well, Ilara said, trying to appear confident. If you're so powerful, then surely you can perform the most difficult of spells. The sorcerer raised an eyebrow, intrigued. And what spell would that be, little one? Ilara smiled sweetly. I've heard of a spell that can turn back time, but only the most skilled sorcerers can cast it. Surely, someone as powerful as you can do it? The sorcerer smirked. Of course, I can. Watch and be amazed, foolish girl. He began to chant an incantation, waving his hands over the crystal orb. But as he did so, he became so focused on the spell that he didn't notice Argent swooping down to the orb, using his sharp beak to peck at the chains of dark magic. With each peck, the chains began to weaken. Ilara kept the sorcerer distracted, asking questions and pretending to be impressed by his show of magic. And then, just as the sorcerer was about to complete the spell, the final chain snapped, and the crystal orb shattered. The silver feather burst free, its light filling the valley with a blinding brilliance. No, the sorcerer screamed, reaching out to grab the feather, but it was too late. The magic of the silver feather surged through the valley, overpowering the sorcerer's dark magic. With a final, desperate cry, the sorcerer was enveloped in the light and vanished into thin air. Ilara shielded her eyes from the light, and when it finally dimmed, she saw that the silver feather was floating gently toward her. She reached out and caught it in her hands, feeling its warmth and power. The valley, once dark and cold, was now bathed in a soft, golden glow. Thank you, Ilara, Argent said, his voice filled with gratitude. You have saved Lumina and restored the magic of our forest. Ilara smiled, her heart swelling with joy. I couldn't have done it without you, Argent. Let's return the feather to its rightful place. With the silver feather safely in their possession, Ilara and Argent made their way back through the forest. As they walked, the trees began to regain their glow, the rivers sparkled once more, and the flowers bloomed in vibrant colors. The enchanted forest of Lumina was alive again, thanks to the courage and cleverness of a kind-hearted girl. When they reached the heart of the forest, Argent led Alara to a grand tree with silver bark and golden leaves. At the base of the tree was a pedestal, and Alara carefully placed the silver feather upon it. The feather glowed even brighter, and a wave of magic rippled through the forest, restoring its beauty and life. As a reward for her bravery, the creatures of Lumina bestowed upon Alara a small token of their gratitude, a necklace with a tiny silver feather charm, enchanted with the magic of the forest. As long as you wear this, Alara, you will always be connected to Lumina, Argent explained. And should you ever need help, the creatures of the forest will come to your aid. Alara thanked Argent and the other creatures for their kindness and set off for home, her heart filled with the memories of her grand adventure. When she returned to her village, the villagers were overjoyed to see her safe and sound. Ilara's parents embraced her, relieved that their daughter had returned. She told them all about her journey to the enchanted forest and how she had saved it from the wicked sorcerer. 
From that day on, Alara became known as the Guardian of Lumina. Though she returned to her simple life in the village, she knew that the magic of the enchanted forest would always be with her. And whenever she listened to the birds sing, she could hear them whispering tales of her bravery and the light of the silver feather that had saved their world. And so, Ilara lived a long and happy life, filled with the magic of Lumina and the love of her village. She never forgot her adventure in the enchanted forest, and every time she touched the silver feather charm around her neck, she smiled, knowing that she had done something truly special. And they all lived happily ever after. The End Once upon a time, in a faraway kingdom surrounded by vast oceans and high mountains, there was a small village named Moonshadow. The village was famous for its magical moonlight, which bathed the entire village in a soft, silver glow every night. The moonlight was said to be a gift from the moon goddess, who loved the village and its kind-hearted people. The moonlight festival was celebrated every month during the full moon. The villagers would gather in the town square, where they danced, sang, and told stories under the bright moonlight. The festival was a time of joy, and everyone eagerly awaited it. But one day, something strange happened. As the villagers prepared for the moonlight festival, the sky grew dark, and the moon disappeared from sight. The night was pitch black, and no moonlight fell upon the village. The people of Moonshadow were confused and worried. Without the moonlight, the village felt cold and empty. In the heart of the village lived a young girl named Lyra. She was brave and curious, with a deep love for the moon and its light. Lyra couldn't bear to see her village in darkness, so she decided to find out what had happened to the moonlight. Lyra's grandmother, who was known as the village elder, told her an ancient story about the moon goddess and a powerful crystal called the moonstone. The moonstone was the source of the moon's light, and it was said to be hidden in a secret cave deep within the forbidden forest. The moonstone is guarded by powerful creatures, her grandmother warned. No one has ever returned from the forbidden forest. It is a dangerous journey, Lyra. But Lyra's heart was set. She couldn't stand by while her village suffered in darkness. I must go, grandmother, she said. I will find the moonstone and bring back the moonlight. With a heavy heart, Lyra's grandmother gave her a small silver pendant shaped like a crescent moon. This will protect you, my dear. It holds a piece of the moon's magic. Use it wisely. Lyra thanked her grandmother and set off on her journey. She walked through the village, past the darkened houses and empty streets, until she reached the edge of the forbidden forest. The trees were tall and twisted, their branches forming a tangled web above her. The forest was dark, but Lyra's crescent moon pendant glowed softly, lighting her way. As Lyra ventured deeper into the forest, she encountered strange and mystical creatures. First, she met a wise old owl with feathers as white as snow. The owl watched her with curious eyes and asked, Why do you wander into the forbidden forest, young one? I'm searching for the moonstone, Lyra replied. The moon has disappeared, and my village is in darkness. The owl hooted softly. Many have searched for the moonstone, but none have found it. The path is treacherous, and the guardian of the moonstone is fearsome but I see courage in your heart, and I will help you." The owl guided Lyra through the dense forest, helping her avoid the dangerous pitfalls and traps that lay hidden in the shadows. They traveled together for hours until they reached a shimmering river that sparkled with a faint silver light. This is the river of reflections, the owl said. It is said that the river shows you your true self. You must cross it to reach the Moonstone's cave, but beware of what you might see. Lyra took a deep breath and stepped into the river. The water was cool and calm, and as she waded through it, she looked down and saw her reflection. But instead of seeing her own face, she saw the faces of the villagers, her friends, family, and neighbors, looking back at her. They were sad and frightened, lost in the darkness without the moonlight. Lyra's heart ached for her village, and she realized that her journey was not just for herself but for everyone she loved. With renewed determination, she crossed the river and stepped onto the opposite shore. The owl, who had flown across the river, landed beside her. You have passed the test of the river of reflections, the owl said. 
Now, you must face the Guardian of the Moonstone. Be brave, Lyra, and remember that you are not alone. With the Owl's words in her mind, Lyra continued her journey until she reached the entrance of the cave. The cave was hidden behind a waterfall that glowed with a faint, silvery light. Lyra could hear the sound of rushing water and feel the cool mist on her face as she approached. Taking a deep breath, Lyra stepped through the waterfall and into the cave. The inside of the cave was vast and filled with shimmering crystals that reflected the light of her pendant. In the center of the cave, on a pedestal made of pure moonlight, rested the moonstone. It was a large, glowing crystal that pulsed with the soft, silver light of the moon. But before Lyra could reach the moonstone, a shadowy figure emerged from the darkness. It was a giant wolf with fur as black as the night and eyes that glowed like burning embers. The wolf was the guardian of the moonstone, and it bared its teeth in a menacing snarl as it approached her. Lyra's heart raced, but she stood her ground. I am not here to harm you, she said, her voice steady. I seek the moonstone to restore the light to my village. Without it, my people will suffer in darkness. The wolf growled, its eyes narrowing. Many have come before you, seeking the moonstone's power for themselves. Why should I trust you? Lyra held up the crescent moon pendant. I carry the moon's magic with me, she said. I do not seek the moonstone for power, but to help those I love. If you let me take it, I promise to return it once the light is restored. The wolf stared at her for a long moment, as if weighing her words. Then, slowly, it stepped aside, allowing Lyra to approach the pedestal. Lyra reached out and carefully took the moonstone in her hands. It was warm and pulsed with a gentle light that filled her with a sense of peace and hope. Thank you, she whispered to the wolf, who watched her with wary eyes. With the moonstone in her possession, Lyra hurried back through the cave and out into the forest. The owl was waiting for her, and together they retraced their steps, crossing the river of reflections making their way back through the forbidden forest. As they neared the edge of the forest, Lyra noticed something strange. The moonstone's light was growing dimmer with each step she took. The closer she got to the village, the weaker its glow became. The moonstone's power is fading, Lyra said in a worried voice. What's happening? The owl looked at her with wise eyes. The moonstone's light cannot shine in the presence of greed or selfishness. It is a pure light, and it can only be restored if your heart remains true. Lyra nodded, understanding the owl's words. She knew that she had to keep her promise to the guardian wolf and return the moonstone once the light was restored. She couldn't let her own desires cloud her heart. Finally, Lyra and the owl reached the village. The villagers were gathered in the town square, waiting anxiously for her return. When they saw Lyra holding the moonstone, a cheer went up, and hope returned to their hearts. Lyra stepped into the center of the square and held the moonstone high. Its light, though dim, began to spread out, casting a soft glow over the village. The darkness lifted, and the villagers felt the warmth of the moonlight once more. But Lyra knew that this light was only temporary. She had to fulfill her promise and return the moonstone to its rightful place. As the villagers celebrated, Lyra turned to her grandmother and told her of the promise she had made. Her grandmother smiled gently and nodded. You have done well, Lyra. The light has returned, and now it is time to keep your word. With the villagers' blessings, Lyra set off once more for the forbidden forest. The owl flew beside her, guiding her back to the cave where the wolf waited. When Lyra reached the cave, she stepped through the waterfall and approached the pedestal. The wolf was there, watching her silently. Without hesitation, Lyra placed the moonstone back on the pedestal, and its light began to shine brightly once more, filling the cave with its silver glow. The wolf nodded in approval, and its eyes softened. You have kept your promise, Lyra. The moonstone's light will continue to shine for your village, as long as you remain true to your heart. Lyra smiled, feeling a deep sense of fulfillment. She knew that she had done the right thing, and the light of the moonstone would forever be a part of her village. As she left the cave, Lyra looked up at the sky and saw the moon shining brightly once more, its silver light bathing the land in a gentle glow. 
the village of Moonshadow was no longer in darkness, and the Moonlight Festival could continue as it always had. Lyra returned home, where the villagers welcomed her with open arms. They celebrated her bravery in the return of the moonlight, and from that day on, Lyra was known as the Guardian of the Moon. And so, the village of Moonshadow thrived, bathed in the light of the moon, and Lyra lived a long and happy life, always remembering the journey that had brought the light back to her beloved village. And they all lived happily ever after. The End Once upon a time, in a land far beyond the reach of any map, there was a kingdom called Eldoria. It was a place of extraordinary beauty, where lush green forests stretched as far as the eye could see, and towering mountains kissed the sky. The river sparkled like diamonds, and the flowers bloomed in colors that words could hardly describe. But the most remarkable thing about Eldoria was its people, who lived in peace and harmony, guided by the wisdom of their beloved King Alden and Queen Alara. King Alden and Queen Alara ruled with kindness and fairness, and under their reign, Eldoria prospered. The kingdom was known for its magical fruit orchards, whose trees bore the sweetest fruits that could heal the sick and grant strength to the weak. The people of Eldoria were content, and there was no sign of hardship or sorrow. However, Eldoria held a secret known only to the royal family. Deep within the heart of the kingdom, hidden away in a secluded valley, lay the Tree of Eternity. This ancient tree was the source of all the magic in Eldoria. Its roots stretched deep into the earth, drawing power from the very core of the world, and its branches reached high into the heavens, connecting the kingdom to the stars. The Tree of Eternity had been a gift from the gods to the first king of Eldoria, and it was said that as long as the tree stood strong, the kingdom would remain protected. But one fateful day, a shadow fell over Eldoria. A powerful sorcerer named Malachar, who had long been banished from the kingdom for his dark deeds, returned with a heart full of vengeance. Malachar had spent years honing his dark magic, and he had discovered the secret of the Tree of Eternity. Consumed by envy and greed, he sought to take control of the tree and its power for himself. Under the cover of night, Malachar crept into the hidden valley where the Tree of Eternity stood. With a wicked spell, he placed a curse upon the tree, causing its leaves to wither and its branches to twist in agony. The once vibrant tree began to decay, and as it did, the magic of Eldoria started to fade. The rivers dried up, the forests turned barren, and the once happy people of Eldoria fell into despair. King Alden and Queen Alara were heartbroken to see their kingdom suffering. They knew that if the curse was not lifted, Eldoria would be lost forever. Desperate to save their people, they sought the counsel of the kingdom's oldest and wisest sage, Master Elric. Master Elric, who had lived for centuries and had vast knowledge of ancient magic, told the king and queen of a way to break the curse. There is only one way to restore the tree of eternity, he said, his voice heavy with sorrow. A pure-hearted soul must journey to the top of the Forbidden Mountain and retrieve the Crystal of Light, which is hidden in the Caves of Shadow. The crystal is the only thing powerful enough to break Malachar's curse. The Forbidden Mountain was a treacherous place, surrounded by dark forests and guarded by fierce creatures. No one had ever dared to venture there, for it was said to be cursed by ancient spirits. But King Alden and Queen Alara knew that they had no choice. They could not allow their kingdom to wither away. The royal couple had a son, Prince Rowan, who was known for his courage and compassion. Though he was young, he had already proven himself to be a brave warrior and a wise leader. When he heard of the task, he immediately volunteered to undertake the perilous journey. Father, mother, Prince Rowan said, kneeling before the king and queen, I will go to the Forbidden Mountain and retrieve the Crystal of Light. I cannot stand by and watch our kingdom suffer. I promise to return with the crystal and restore Eldoria to its former glory. King Alden and Queen Alara were proud of their son's bravery, but they were also fearful for his safety. They knew the dangers that lay ahead, but they also knew that Rowan was their only hope. With heavy hearts, they gave him their blessing. The next morning, Prince Rowan set out on his journey, armed with his sword and a small satchel of provisions. Before he left, Queen Alara gave him a locket containing a picture of the royal family. This will remind you of your home and the love that awaits you, she said, placing the locket around his neck. 
Rowan traveled for days, crossing the barren lands that had once been lush and green. He encountered many dangers along the way, treacherous ravines, wild beasts, and storms that raged without warning. But no matter the obstacle, Rowan pressed on, driven by his love for his kingdom and his people. Finally, after a long and arduous journey, Rowan reached the foot of the Forbidden Mountain. The mountain was tall and foreboding, its peak hidden in dark clouds. The air was thick with an eerie silence, and Rowan could feel the weight of ancient magic all around him. With a deep breath, Rowan began to climb. The path was steep and rocky, and as he ascended, the wind howled and the sky grew darker. But Rowan was determined, and he did not falter. As he neared the top of the mountain, he came to the entrance of the Caves of Shadow. The caves were pitch black, and the air inside was cold and damp. Rowan knew that the crystal was hidden deep within, guarded by the spirits of the mountain. Undeterred, Rowan entered the caves. He lit a torch and carefully made his way through the winding tunnels. The walls were covered in ancient runes, glowing faintly in the darkness. As he ventured deeper, he heard whispers in the air, voices that seemed to come from the very stones themselves. Turn back, young prince, the voices murmured. The crystal is not meant for mortal hands. Leave this place, or face the wrath of the spirits. But Rowan did not turn back. He knew that the fate of Eldoria depended on him. He continued through the tunnels until he reached a large chamber at the heart of the mountain. There, in the center of the chamber, was the crystal of light. It was a large, glowing gemstone, radiating a warm, golden light that pushed back the darkness. But the crystal was not unguarded. Surrounding it were the spirits of the mountain, their forms made of swirling shadows and mist. They watched Rowan with glowing eyes, their expressions unreadable. Why have you come here, mortal? one of the spirits asked, its voice echoing through the chamber. The crystal is not for the living. Rowan stepped forward, his heart steady. I have come to save my kingdom, he replied. The tree of eternity has been cursed by an evil sorcerer, and without the crystal of light, my people will perish. I ask for your help, great spirits, to break the curse and restore Eldoria. The spirits were silent for a long moment, and Rowan feared they would refuse him. But then the lead spirit spoke again. Your heart is pure, young prince, and your cause is just. You may take the crystal, but know this, its power comes at a cost. You must be willing to sacrifice something precious to you, for only then will the curse be lifted. Rowan nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. I will do whatever it takes to save my kingdom, he vowed. The spirits bowed their heads in respect, and the lead spirit gestured for Rowan to take the crystal. Then the crystal is yours, brave prince. May it bring light to your kingdom once more. Rowan approached the crystal and carefully lifted it from its pedestal. As he did, the chamber was filled with a brilliant light, and the spirits began to fade away, their duty fulfilled. With the crystal in hand, Rowan made his way out of the caves and descended the mountain. The journey back to Eldoria was long, but Rowan felt a renewed sense of hope. He knew that with the crystal, he could break the curse and save his kingdom. When Rowan finally returned to Eldoria, he found the kingdom in even worse condition than before. The land was dry and barren, and the people were weak and sickly. But Rowan did not hesitate. He made his way to the hidden valley where the Tree of Eternity stood, now nothing more than a twisted, withered husk. Rowan approached the tree and held up the crystal of light. The crystal glowed brightly, and Rowan felt its power coursing through him. He knew that the time had come to make his sacrifice. I offer my strength, my heart, and my soul to restore this land, Rowan declared. Take what you need, but save my people and my home. As he spoke the words, the crystal began to hum with energy. A beam of light shot from the crystal and enveloped the tree of eternity. The ground trembled, and the air crackled with magic. Rowan felt a warmth in his chest as the crystal drew upon his life force, and he knew that his sacrifice was being accepted. Slowly, the tree began to change. Its twisted branches straightened, and its withered leaves turned green once more. The curse was being lifted, and the magic of Eldoria was returning. 
When the transformation was complete, the tree of eternity stood tall and proud, its branches laden with golden leaves that shimmered in the sunlight. The land around it began to heal, and the rivers flowed once more. The magic of the crystal had restored Eldoria to its former glory. But Rowan paid a price for his victory. The crystal, having fulfilled its purpose, shattered into a thousand pieces, and the light that had once filled Rowan's heart faded away. He fell to the ground, his strength spent, but with a smile on his face. He had saved his kingdom. The people of Eldoria, seeing the land reborn, rejoiced. They found Prince Rowan lying by the tree of eternity, and though his body was weak, his spirit remained strong. They carried him back to the castle, where King Alden and Queen Alara wept with both sorrow and pride. Though Rowan's life force had been greatly diminished, the magic of the Tree of Eternity began to heal him. Over time, he regained his strength, though he would never be the same as before. The people of Eldoria honored him as their hero, and he continued to lead them with wisdom and compassion. Eldoria flourished once more, and the story of Prince Rowan and the Crystal of Light was told for generations to come. It became a tale of bravery, sacrifice, and the enduring power of love. And so, the lost kingdom of Eldoria was lost no more, but lived on in the hearts of its people, a beacon of hope and light in a world that would never forget the bravery of a young prince who saved his home. The End